What is going on everyone? In this video, I wanna to talk to you about DynamoDB record cleanup using a Dynamo feature called TTL, which also stands for time to live. Now, time to live isn't a feature that's specific to DynamoDB. It's used in network communications. It's used to set timers on your browser when you set cookies so that they only last for a certain time. Uh, but it's a feature that's very, very useful in Dynamo to make sure that you're keeping fresh data in your database and not irrelevant stuff that is no longer useful to your application. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a bunch of items, including how it works and a demo. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. So first of all, uh, what is TTL? And TTL, like I mentioned, stands for time to live. And as I also mentioned, it's not a new feature and it's something that's existed for quite some time. And it's a feature that allows automatic removal of individual items. The key here is automatic. And if you think about this, this is a very useful thing to automatically have items removed based on their own schedule without you having to perform any kind of job to periodically flush them out. Uh, so if you think about how you would do this, if you didn't have a feature like TTL, probably have to write a script that would periodically scan your database and remove things that are irrelevant anymore. But who wants to spend extra time doing this stuff and have to maintain that script and make sure that you run it um, if you can leverage a feature that already exists and handles this for you automatically. So that's where DynamoDB TTL comes in. So you can imagine how useful this feature is. One example is that uh, say you have a dashboard app that only cares about the current day's worth of data or maybe only the current week or month. You don't want to keep stuff sticking around in there when it is no longer relevant. And a neat part about TTL is it can actually help you to reduce cost and make some queries more efficient. Uh, so this boils down to how Dynamo works under the hood. Whenever we perform a query, we consume either read or write units. Um, and the read or write units that we consume is proportional to the amount of data that we scan. So if we have data in our database that is no longer relevant, but our query has to iterate over it or consider it as part of the query itself, those are read capacity units that it's wasting. And it'll return that data back to you and you'll probably have to filter it on your side. Uh, obviously, you don't want to pay more than what you have to. So using a feature like TTL can be great for reducing cost. And it also can make some queries more efficient because you're not retrieving as much data as you normally would. And finally, TTL is totally free. Uh, it doesn't cost anything extra other than what you would normally use with DynamoDB. Uh, and it does not consume write throughput. Now instead, it consumes something called burst capacity. And burst capacity is an amount of capacity that DynamoDB reserves in response to bursts of traffic. So that even if you're only provisioned for a certain amount of read or write capacity units, Dynamo will be capable of responding to that. Uh, so that's the pool of capacity that it's using. So you also have to consider the fact that if your, your table is under duress and you are consuming your burst capacity to service queries, it may take longer for TTL to kick in. And I have another slide coming up on the gotchas of TTL in a few moments here. So that's a little bit about what TTL is. Let's move on now to how TTL works or how you can set it up uh, from a practical perspective. And I just have a very basic example here. So let's assume that we have an orders table. Uh, this is just a very basic uh, orders dynamo table. And the first step is for us to do just a very simple configuration. We go into the console or we use the DynamoDB CLI and we mark a specific field on our table as the TTL field. Now you can only have one field designated as your TTL field. So for example, I would go into my table in this example and, and literally create a field called TTL field. You can call this thing anything you want, but as long as you designate it as the TTL field in the DynamoDB config, then you're fine. Now the next obvious question is how do I make Dynamo actually respect this field and how do I get it to remove data when it's no longer relevant? Well, there's a little bit of work that you need to do on your part. Um, so say for example, if we have a REST API here, I'm just gonna draw on the screen here to make this a little bit simpler. So say we have a REST API that's, that's here and we have a request that's coming in. Now say in our use case, we only want to keep data around for seven days. That's kind of our, our limit in terms of what data is relevant for our application. So when we are, uh, when the request comes in and we are computing what to insert into this table here, uh, we just basically say, what is the current time plus seven days? So we just say plus seven days 
we calculate that in memory. And what you need to ensure is that this value is an epoch seconds timestamp. And I'm gonna give you an example of that when we do the demo. You can't have it in just like a normal date field. You can't have it in even epoch uh, milliseconds or nanoseconds format. It's not gonna work. So make sure that you have it in epoch seconds format. And I'll show you a nifty little tool that you can use uh, to just kind of experiment with that later. Uh, but essentially, once you calculate that value on your record, you would set the value of TTL field on your record to be seven days from now. And then when you insert that record into your table, now it's gonna have this additional field on it. And that's basically all you need to do. DynamoDB is going to uh, see that you have a value under this field, and it's going to automatically remove that after a period of time, in this case, after seven days of that record uh, being in the database. Um, so essentially, after that seventh day passes, DynamoDB is gonna wake up and it's gonna promptly try to remove that. Uh, now there are some SLA uh, limitations here, so it doesn't always happen very promptly, and that's something I wanna talk about next. Uh, so let's move on to that section. So uh, just some more details and some gotchas and things that uh, you should know about if you're thinking about using this feature. So the first one is that obviously TTL happens automatically after you set everything up. You don't need to do anything more. Uh, so that's pretty nifty and pretty handy. Uh, the second one, kind of what I was mentioning before, is that it needs to be in epoch and in seconds. And the value can't be string. It needs to be the end type, which is number in DynamoDB. If you recall, there's a whole bunch of different types. There's string, boolean, list, set, a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, and as for number, you need to make sure that field is an end type when you are setting it up and when you are populating the value. Now, the next one is uh, an important one uh, because some people fall into the trap of relying on this a little bit too much. Now, TTL can take 48 hours or more to actually remove something. So what I mean by that is if you have something when you set the TTL on seven days from now it can actually take nine days. Uh, so that's something you need to be very cognizant of. And the likelihood of this taking longer, according to the AWS documentation, is proportional to the size of the table. Uh, so if you have a very, very large table, this can take longer. And the amount of capacity that is being consumed on that table is also a factor. Now, I have this other note here, which is to not rely on it. And what I mean by this is don't code up your application with the assumption that everything in the database is going to be removed after seven days. As we can see here, it can take quite a bit uh, more significant time. Although in my experience, this happens pretty quickly, usually within, I would say, five to 10 minutes uh, in my experiments. But I wouldn't rely on it as part of your business logic in your application. Uh, so that's it for the PowerPoint here. Let's move on into the AWS console now where I'm gonna demonstrate this feature out. Alrighty, so here we are in the AWS console. I'm gonna head over to DynamoDB now. And table section in the top left. And I have some tables here that I already created just for testing purposes. So let's show you how to set this up on this orders table. So uh, to enable the TTL field or to kind of mark the table as um, TTL enabled and to set a field name, you just go to the overview section of the table after clicking on it. You scroll down here and there's going to be a section called time to live attribute, which is right here. You're going to go to manage TTL. And what you want to do is under the section here that says TTL attribute, all you have to do is set this to whatever TTL field that you want. Um, so you can literally set this to anything. I'm just gonna say TTL um, and it can just note here that it can take up to one hour to apply it across all your partitions. This only really applies when you have large tables. There are some additional details here for um, if you want to enable um, your records to be sent via DynamoDB streams with new and old images. I have a video on DynamoDB streams. Maybe you can check that out to understand this section a little bit more, um, but I'm not gonna go into it too much in detail. Now in this section down here, uh, there's this neat little feature called Preview TTL. And what this thing does is if you already have records in your database with this field, with TTL, and with dates populated in the field, what you can actually do is come down here and just run a little experiment and see what would happen if you applied TTL as of a certain date. So this is kind of forward looking. You can set this at points in the future, and then you can just run preview and uh, it'll show you what will be potentially removed from your table if you remove it. Uh, this is a cool little uh, feature just to test things out. 
uh, but we're not going to use that here. So we're going to go ahead and say continue. And now you can see here we have uh, the TTL field that's active for this table. So if I go to items now and we can just create a very simple item and we can just put in one, two, three for the order ID. And what we also want to do is just put an additional um, field here. Now, remember, it needs to be number, as we mentioned before, and the name of the field needs to match. Uh, so just get that in there. OK, perfect. And for a number or an epoch value, what you can do is go to this handy website. It's called epochconverter.com. And uh, it lets you just kind of get any epoch uh, timestamp that you want. You can get it in a future date or you can get it basically right now. This is the current time in epoch. Uh, by default, it's in seconds, so it's pretty useful. Um, and remember that it has to be in seconds when you put the value into your table or else this isn't going to work. So I just copied what was here uh, just a moment ago. And what you just basically do is just come over here, paste this sucker in, click on save and nothing happens immediately. And that's pretty expected. This could be for one of two reasons. Sometimes it takes an hour for TTL to kick in, as we saw on this table. Uh, but other times, like there's no guarantee when it's actually going to remove it. Now, I actually did this exact same exercise on my other table here called demo table. And you can see that there's nothing in here, which is good. And uh, if we take a look at the config for this table, I did have a TTL field. Well, this one was named a little bit differently. It was called TTL field as opposed to TTL. But if you want to confirm that, hey, is this thing actually working? Is it removing data? It may not be obvious to you if you're just, you know, you have an empty table here. But if you have thousands of records, how do you check if it's actually removing something, right? Uh, so if you go to the metrics section, uh, the metrics tab up here, there's a very useful graph if we scroll down a little bit uh, right here, time to live. And if you click on this guy and uh, we move this to, I don't know, the last two weeks, I don't know when I was experimenting with this. Yeah. So you can see here uh, in the last two weeks when I initially made the table, it removed one. And um, I was just experimenting the other day and it removed one shortly after I inserted it. So this is where you can come to kind of track how many items it's removing per period. Um, but it's a very handy tool to just monitor when your items or if your items are being removed from your table. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Make sure you check out my other ones on DynamoDB. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you next time.